Hey gang, how you doing? Making another video today. Today's uh, project, if you will, is going to be on ignition coils and spark plugs on my L322 supercharged Range Rover. This is a 2007. It's got the 4.2 liter, of course, in it. And I have a misfire for cylinders 3 and 7. Uh, these ignition coils have 175,000 miles on them and the spark plugs have about 65,000 miles on them. So I'm just going to go ahead and replace them and be done with it. However, I will show you how to diagnose the exact coil that's bad so you can differentiate between the coil or spark plug so you know which one to pinpoint and replace just that one part. Uh, because if we let it, these cars will uh, run us into the bankrupt court real fast. So without further ado, we'll get it going. Hopefully it'll be a nice, easy job. I'll show you how to get all the uh, associated bits off as we go along. And hopefully we won't learn any new swear words while we're doing this. All right, so let's get going. Okay, so the first thing we got to do is get all the covers off, okay? So that's going to entail pulling off this strip and set it aside in a place where it won't get damaged. And then we're going to take off these two 13 millimeter nuts. There's one over there and there's one right here. It's just a corresponding lo location. So I've already pre-loosened these. Put them in my little box. Or my magnetic bowl, really. Then we get this one off. Okay, now we got to get the cabin filter plenum off. Now this is kind of a, um, um, they're getting brittle with age. So once I get it up to this point, then I like to grab the edges where it's sturdy and then just lift it out. You put that in a safe place where it won't get stepped on. Okay, now, if you don't know already, we have these four nuts to get off and don't forget you gotta take this off because that also keeps this cover down so we'll take the oil filler cap off in a sec but first i need to get these four off and then we'll pick it right back up okay got the bolts loosened up take off your filler cover filler cap and lift this thing off and see how much of the insulation is going to stay <laughs> All right, it all came off no problem. That is a beautiful thing. Okay, so put this cap back on so we don't get any debris flopping in there. All right, next we gotta get the covers off so we have access to the coils and the plugs themselves. Okay, so this cover pops right off the valve cover. Take your thumb or your finger and just pop it up and it lifts right off. It's these pins that hold it on. I don't know if you can see that in the light. There's one and there's another one right there. So those connect right here at the tip of my finger. I don't know if you can see that rod very well, but it's there. Okay, so then you undo one of these bolts. Okay, here's another one here, just so you get an idea. I highly recommend a magnetic tool of some kind. I have this little thing and it's a claw. And this is my second or third one. So I bought this pretty cheap at your local auto parts place, wherever you like, so. Now, I kind of cheated because last time I did the plugs, I put uh, a little bit of the uh, dielectric grease on the boots themselves for the ignition coils. So these pop, pop right out. Okay, so uh, anything to make yourself a little, you know, a little more, uh, a little beneficial and saving time. That's the secret sauce in working on cars. Otherwise, you can go crazy just working on these things for an hour. So here is... Yeah, it's all swelling up. There we go. There's the ignition coil. All right. Popped off pretty easily. Now I'll get the spark plug out. Okay. This one doesn't look too bad at all, actually. Uh, and I got some factory replacement ones I'll be putting on. So other than that, oh, actually, that's fun. I don't know if you can see that. Right there, it says FOMOCO. <laughs> Back when Land Rover was owned by Ford, I presume. Okay, so I'll get the rest of these out and then start working on the spark plugs and I'll, I'll uh, catch you up in a sec. So on occasion, I get these uh, crazy 
uh, P2096 and 2098. Okay, so with the spark plugs though, it doesn't look too bad. A little on the lean side. That's the browning. But the plugs don't look too bad. And they're cheap enough. Cheap insurance. I don't want to repeat this tearing everything apart again. So I'm just going to replace the ignition coils and the spark plugs and be done with it for the next 100,000 miles or whatever. Okay, so that's where I'm at now. I'm going to swap out the spark plugs. I just showed you how to take one of those out. It's crazy easy. You just got to repeat it seven more times. And then uh, I'll show you how to prep the new ones before you put them in just to make your life easier in the event you got to do this again or one of them fails, God forbid, and you got to do that again. Okay? All right, so I got all four coil packs out, all four spark plugs out. Now I'm getting ready to prep the new ones going in. I wanted to touch base with you guys and show you something that I do, and it's something that I do, okay? It's, you don't have to, the factory manual doesn't say you have to do this, anything like that, okay? So here I got the Denso Iridium plugs. I've had great uh, experience with these. This is the old ones I took out. They were just fine. In fact, I got all four of them laid out. I'm gonna take a look at the burn pattern on each. Uh, make sure I don't have a weak cylinder or anything like that that would be telltale on a spark plug. You know, not exact science, but at least gives you an idea. Okay, so spark plugs are pretty straightforward. I used to work at a BMW shop years and years and years ago um, called M Sport Enterprises, okay? And a guy, a German, I used to work for, he taught me this little trick, and I've been doing it ever since. Uh, this is especially keen for aluminum cylinder heads, okay? So, copper paste. Put a little bit on the threaded portion. A little bit of trip around the threads, right? So it distributes evenly when you thread it in. And there's some already in there, so I don't have to get too crazy with it, too overzealous with it. There you go. Good to go. Slap that puppy in there, and it'll come out with ease next time. All right? It's not going to get stuck in there. Please remember, I live in the north part of the country. A lot of salt and ice. These things are capped with ignition coil, so nothing really gets in there. However, stranger things have happened. <laughs> so I always put any C's on my fasteners and mating surfaces and, you know, things of that nature, and also my spark plug threads. All right, so I'm gonna thread this puppy in there, tighten it down. The box has all the specifications. You know, you get it down hand tight and you give it a half or quarter turn. I don't have my reading glasses on, so forgive me. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's basically it. Thread this puppy in, slap it on, good to go. Now, with the ignition coil, let me set this aside so I don't drop it. Now, with the ignition coil itself, I mentioned dielectric grease and things earlier today. Okay, I'm getting a little debris on this thing. This is where just a dab will do you, right in the hole. That's it. Just a little squirt in there. So when you get the actual spark plug and you're sliding it down the cylinder, it, you can wiggle it around and that dielectric grease will, you know, move, move itself around and it'll plug right into that sucker. And boom, there you go. Good to go. Just like that. And then if you ever got to take this thing back off, comes right off, all right? And this helps also, again, with moisture, debris, things of that nature. Keeps all the crap out, all right? Something I do, something I've had great success with, um, and it's something I'll continue to do um, because I've never had anything bad happen from it, okay? Uh, I don't worry too much about this mating surface because it's got a lip, so it acts like a cup sort of thing over the, the uh, actual valve cover itself. And other than that, pretty simple stuff. You can put a little dab right here too that'll help. Just a tiny, tiny bit. I mean, very little bit. So when you plug in uh, the actual um, power connector, it's gonna work just fine. It won't have you know ohms of resistance or anything crazy going on in there. Okay, so that's about it. Again, with wiring these things, very straightforward stuff. Let me pivot you over and down. When you're putting in the ignition coils, you don't have to worry too much about the wiring because as you can see, you got enough wire per cylinder, okay? So there's two, there's four, six, eight, all the way back, okay? So it's not like an old school distributor cap type engine where 
you know, you get them all mixed up and you think, oh crap, now I gotta find the firing order, find out where number one is, get it to TDC and things like that. We're not doing that no more. This is a much simpler thing, okay? So that's where we're at now. I'm gonna go ahead and button this up. That's pretty much it for the instructional point uh, part of this video, just because I've already shown you how to take it all apart. Uh, so I'll wrap it up here in just a little bit. Let me finish this up and uh, yeah, give me a few. I'll catch right up to you. All right, gang, here is the finished product on the uh, driver's side. So there's that. Now, bear in mind, this is a North American spec vehicle. So the driver's side is the left side, not the right side. So this is the bank two side of the engine that is now complete. All right, so as mentioned before, those little tabs, slide this little monkey in there, kind of feel around. And there you go, it's on. That easy, one-handed even. So to take it off, remember I told you, just stick your thumb in there or something and pop, and it comes right off. So there you go. There's that side. Now I gotta get over to this side, which is a little more complicated. It's a little tighter space. So I wanted to do this one where I got a little bit more um, angle opportunity, I guess you can sell, uh, say, so I can get the camera in there and take a look at a few certain things. Pretty straightforward job, pretty simple. Uh, I think I took 30 minutes just fiddle farting around. Uh, I'd say 45 with, you know, rearranging the camera and trying to get the best angle and redoing it and so on. So uh, that went pretty straightforward. Uh, no new curse words were discovered. I relied on some of the more traditional ones to get me through this job. <laughs> and other than that, um, I'll get the other side done and then uh, do a recap, okay? Oh, one other thing I wanted to point out. Let me get this cover back off. When you're putting in the coil pack, dang bone, in the back, remember that you got all this wiring loom that goes to all the other cylinders. So you gotta kind of fiddle around with this, get it out of the way to get that one in there, and then tighten up this eight millimeter bolt. Okay, really, you got 13 millimeter to take off the cabin filter plenum. You got four 10 millimeters to take off the engine cover. And then it's these eight millimeters to get the coil packs out. And then the actual spark plugs themselves, which is a five eighths is what I'm using. So pretty straightforward job, not many tools needed. If you need other stuff to pry and pull and you know, things of that nature, then sure. But uh, other than that, I'm gonna finish up the other side and I'll get right back to you. And here's the other side done. All four of them went on without a problem, just like the uh, driver's side. So the passenger side, I, I didn't expect uh, any difference. It's a little tough reaching around the PCV, and I think that's the secondary air solenoid. I honestly don't know. So the PCV is kind of in the way. You got big, you know, hands. It's hard to get in there and get at that little eight millimeter that's right there the retainer bolt. But other than that, they came right off, went right back on. Uh, the harnesses, you got to kind of tuck in here like the other side to get the cover back on. And the same situation as the other side with the, the pin there and the other pin there. And they made into that pin and that pin, uh, the receivers. Only now it's upside down as opposed to the driver's side. I guess you can say the Driver side's upside down, passenger side, vice versa, whichever. So that one's done. Now I'm going to put this back together, put the cover back on, put the plenum back on, and then get this thing out on a road test and verify that everything uh, is jiving and working well together. All right, gang, now we got the finished product. The engine is dirty, bear with me. Uh, I actually do take this thing off-road a fair amount, so it gets beat up pretty good and covered in dirt and junk everywhere. So I put the cover back on, of course. Put the plenum back on. These little 13 millimeter bolts, there's one there and there's one there. I only put about 20 pounds of torque on those things. I don't really get overzealous with them. This seal, you just kind of center and stick back in place. Make sure the gap's the same here and on the other side over there. Other than that, pretty straightforward. No busted knuckles, no, you know, confessional necessary everything went okay no swinging a rubber chicken over your head or anything like that so that all went really well now you get to see how clever you are and take it for a test drive to see if you truly got it right so that's what i'm gonna head into next so far sounds good sounds pretty 
dang good. I am quite pleased. Uh, we'll drive around just a little bit more. Um, so far, so good. No check engine lights, no pop ups, no sputtering, missing, or anything that was doing before, which is a beautiful thing, honestly. Uh, so, the mileage uh, actually, the uh, mileage, uh, instant mileage thing on here is saying I, I have much more range than I used to. <laughs> when you have two misfires, number three and number seven cylinders, um, it was, I filled up the tank of gas, right? I filled up the tank, the super unleaded, and it told me that I had a range of about 290 miles. <laughs> so I knew I had a big problem. Uh, it ran okay, but you know, if you went anything past half throttle, uh, that's when it started missing and falling, and, and you know, it'd fall on its face and wouldn't go anywhere, and I'd go to the reduced engine power thing, you know, and that's a bummer. So right now it's already recalibrated itself. I'm 7 eighths tank, just over 3 quarter, and it's already saying 340 miles uh, per this tank. So it's already readjusting itself, and that's, that's fantastic. Uh, nice and smooth, nice and quiet. Uh, not quite to operating temp yet, so I'll wait. Uh, get it going down the road here just a little bit more. Uh, all in all, it took probably... Well, I was messing around with the camera, trying to get the right angle and, you know, this vantage point and that vantage point and so on. But all that said and done, I was probably an hour and a half, two hours into this, okay? I'm a really small YouTube channel, so I don't have all the super high-speed cameras and all that other stuff. So, you know, I'm trying to work by myself and then get this stuff done and then try and make this productive for the next person to come along. So, you know, that, that's the only reason why I'm doing this channel. Because I had a hard time finding out information, so I figured I'd share this information uh, in video format because there's a lot less lost in translation when you go through a video, all right? So, especially when you're looking at a hands on application. So, uh, I thought that'd be a good idea. Okay, so I'm in a little bit of traffic, and I don't want to be doing Mach 1 down this road because you know the law enforcement officials are hiding all over the place. So, let's do this. Temps at midpoint. Pop it into sport mode. Sounds good. Sounds good. And I only broke the speed limit just a little bit. Just a little bit. Solo ball. So, all right. Now let's do a little kick down action. Okay, it is official, problem solved. <laughs> okay, so as usual, please feel free to like, comment, share, subscribe, tell me I'm a lunatic, tell me you hate the ratchets I use or whatever, I don't know. I, I love feedback on the videos, I think it's a lot of fun.